Professor Allison, good to see you. Very nice to see you again. Last time we saw each other was at China Development Forum, yes. and now at Boyle Forum for Asia. It is the two largest international events uh, for the year 2023, at the very beginning of it, isn't it? That's interesting, and uh, it certainly is a very good, very vivid evidence that China is back, and China is opening up, and now people can see each other and come and visit and talk is the way we're doing. So, And you are back. And unfortunately, I had not been here for three years, so many friends who I used to be able to talk to every three, four months, I haven't seen them personally for three years. I much like to see people in all dimensions. And yeah, and I also see your shoes now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. So it's wonderful. Having said that, how important it is, do you see, Professor, this person-to-person, in-person communications? I, I, I think it's easy to misunderstand, but it's, I think, extremely important because uh, uh, when people don't uh, establish a relationship on the basis of some continuous conversation over time and even respect for each other and many even friendship, the ability to mis misperceive and misconceive is exaggerated. Uh, so it's one thing to uh, hear that you said something or you hear that I said something and then you imagine what I might have meant and then I imagine what you and then once you get started around that you know, the, the differences are, uh, can, uh, wildly, can be wildly exaggerated. What do you think professor through your communications here uh, for example at the China Development Forum and now this time at the Boa Forum are some of the most important misunderstanding, misconceptions that need to be cleared up immediately so that both sides will be able to implement the consensus reached by the two presidents last time at the G20 summit? That's a very good question. So I think the first misunderstanding uh, that I don't necessarily know about uh, Biden's views or Xi's view personally, but first misunderstanding in the governments is to begin with the reality that in big governments, uh, they often do things that nobody intended and nobody expected because just stuff happens. Secondly, in the real world, accidents and incidents happen. Not anybody intended. So from, from an event, don't jump to an intention. First, try to understand what actually happened. Okay? The second thing on the American side, in American politics today, uh, things have become almost hysterical. So Republicans and Democrats, listen to what they say about each other. Republicans say that if Biden is reelected, that's the end of American democracy. The whole country is at stake. Democrats say that if Republicans were to re regain the, the presidency, that the country is finished. So you look at this and you say, what? What are they? So the answer is the American politics is at a stage right now that is hysterical, in my view for two wise leaders. This is not the world we would have chosen, but this is the world we have. We have to live with a world in which incidents and accidents happen. We have to live with a world in which we'll try our best not to have mistakes, but mistakes are gonna happen, for sure. But people and, will say, why don't you clean your own house? But I'd say that on the, in trying to understand the American side of the picture, to say, uh, uh, I can imagine a candid conversation between two parties, a good Chinese and a good American, that said, you know, our, I'm the American. Our politics is completely crazy. I'm describing to you, this is what it is. That's where I live every day. Uh, do you have any suggestions about what, so I, th these are the realities that leaders 
have to find a way to deal with because this relationship is so important that we have to manage it even if American politics is crazy and even if incidents and accidents happen and even and even and even. Right. So here comes the issue of credibility about how much if consensus are being reached between the very top level diplomacy at the president's level then whether it will be implemented or not and here in this part of the world I'm sure through many conversation you had yeah. professor people are confused to say the least why these consensus are not being implemented at all and why one after another quote unquote incidents yeah. pop up in the way of implementing these consensus. I talked to a number of people in Beijing when I was there and that's a common refrain so I would say uh, I think both parties uh, perceive and misperceive the extent to which they agreed to something and it either is being implemented or not implemented and so again back to your point about communication so you and I agree that we're supposed to uh, do something and uh, here's the intent and now you go off and do this and I go off and do that and you say well he's not doing what I thought he was going to do and I say she's not doing what I thought she was going to do so what do we need to do we have to talk about it yes and then we have to be more specific so now when we reach an agreement and we say uh, here here is our purpose this is what we're trying to do and here's our red line, we're not gonna do this, you're not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do this. Right. And here is five specific things, be very specific, that you are gonna do, and here's five you're not gonna do, and then here's five specific things I'm gonna do, and then I'm not gonna do. And now when we meet, we say, you know, uh, I don't think you did uh, this item. And you say, well, if you look carefully, I did. Uh, yeah. uh, I want to ask uh, specifically to follow up about your book, uh, Suicidist Trap, uh, because you were writing the book, if I understand right, with the intention to prevent a Suicidist Trap, Absolutely. to prevent a hot war, right. and also to prevent the Cold War. Right. Yeah. But there were a lot of misunderstanding and misuse of what you wrote in the book uh, that people thought we are in the middle of one of those traps. So what do you say uh, to those who are reading your books? Uh, you know, what can be the takeaway from your perspective for the readers at this point? Well, so the big takeaway is that in some sense, we are in a Thucydidean rivalry. We can't wish that away. That's inevitable. China is a meteoric rising power. Right. US is a colossal ruling power. When a rising power threatens to displace a ruling power, stuff happens. That's life. So this is going to be the fiercest rivalry history has ever seen. That's on the one hand. How, How do, do you know wait, it wait, is the fiercest? Wait, wait, How do you know? Wait, wait, okay. and that seems to be assumed. No, oh, sorry. This is going to be the fiercest rival because China has risen further, faster, and is bigger and stronger than any rival in history. And the U.S is bigger and stronger colossally as a global power, certainly than any power since Rome, and even more than that, because Rome didn't have technologies like the, the U.S. had. So the rivalry is baked into the situation. That's a Thucydidean dynamic. On the other hand, it's not necessary that that ends in war. Four of the 16 cases were no war. So we can learn a lot of lessons from those and apply them in this case. And specifically, if wise people in Beijing and in, in Washington think about it, you ask yourself, is there more reasons why the U.S. and China should be competitors, that's on the one hand, or alternatively, why they should be cooperating, that's on the other hand. So I, I suggested the other day at the, at the, uh, at the uh, development forum, take a page of paper and write, compete on one side, and here are the reasons why they have to be competitors, and turn it over cooperate to the items why they have to cooperate so they have to cooperate to survive by preventing a war that would destroy both of us so that's a pretty powerful motivator they have to cooperate to have a, a, a biosphere a climate 
that we can survive in. Otherwise, greenhouse gases make it impossible for all of us. But we saw a lot of lip green. service. We saw a lot of lip service yes. over the past few years since uh, many have been reading your book. But at the same time, how to make sure those cooperation are really happening? That is the key from the very beginning of Absolutely. our conversation, how to implement the consensus and the good possibilities. That once again comes back to the question, whether there is uh, trust and how we build trust. What do you think is the best way? Well, again, I'm back to the same old story, but I think people talking to each other candidly, privately in the first instance, and going through things and saying, if you continue doing this at some point, this is going to interact with that, and this is going to interact with that, and you and I may find ourselves somewhere we absolutely do not want to be. So if you would like to take a chance on it, keep going. But otherwise, and then I say, well, I, I can't control this. You know, it's, I'm, I'm not in control of McCarthy. He's going to do what he's going to do. And you say, well, okay, so now I have to figure out how to live with that. Uh, so there'll be a lot of things about uh, the behavior of China and the behavior of the U.S. that the other will not like. But if my survival requires me to find ways to cooperate with you, even if you and I are rivals, and even if I'm not sure about whether I trust you, and even and your survival requires you to cooperate with me. Survival is a pretty powerful instinct if we, if we, are, you know, for intelligent. I think that the, 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 it's very important. I mean, the the purpose of the Thucydides Trap book, and actually the purpose of Thucydides' book, is to remind people business as usual, diplomacy as usual. History as usual. So that should motivate us. We don't want a history as usual. We want a case no war, because no war is necessary in this case for my very own survival. Professor, as always, such a pleasure to see you. It's my pleasure to see you. Yeah.